Welcome, Catholicos, Catholics, Orthodox Christians, all who seek the truth. It's been a while since I've been on. Anyways, today, it's a bit of a different kind of a show. Not a show. It's a, huh, I guess it's a video. Uh, it's a review of a book. Not a review, more like, well, it's a review and a commentary on the politics of obedience the discourse of voluntary servitude, voluntary servitude by Etienne de la Boétie. So this is a, uh, I grabbed that off of Amazon, you can grab it off of probably any site. I think the actual text is available online for free. But this is a good book because it does have um, footnotes in it, or like when Etienne mentions uh, names, if you're wondering what what he is referring to, the the footnotes are very helpful. And uh, there's a good introduction by uh, Murray Rothbard, and uh, it basically I'm gonna go over it. Um, so and why am I doing this? Like why am I reviewing a book on politics? Really? Well, it isn't politics. It is voluntary servitude, the willingness to put ourselves into a state of slavery when we're supposed to be born free because we were set free by Christ and we're wanting to remain free and uh, and especially with what go is going on these days with the accelerating um, politics of obedience and the willing servitude of the masses to their betters and uh, so uh, let's go ahead and go over this book. Uh, so, and this goes to both. It is not just about politics, political tyrants, but religious tyrants. And of course, we are blessed with the worst pope in the history of the Catholic Church, Francis. That's assuming, of course, that Benedict's renunciation of the active exercise of the ministry but remaining Pope Benedict, wearing the white and living in the Vatican, um, was in fact valid in any sense of the word. But let's play along, let's pretend Francis is Pope. And so we have a tyrant in the church and tyrants, many tyrants throughout the world these days. So let's go with the politics of obedience. And... Um, and so I'm going to go through the, uh, well, let's go with the table of contents. Let me show you there. Again, it's worth, do buy the book. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's that expensive. It's pretty cheap. I don't remember how much I paid for it. But anyways, so there's the intro and then the actual uh, essay by Etienne is uh, divided into three parts. Uh, but I'm not, so... So the introduction is by, it's called The Political Thought of Etienne de la Boétie by Murray Rothbard. And he tells us that Etienne was born in uh, France. Uh, in, uh, and this book was written when he was still in university at the University of Orleans, Orléans, uh, between 1552 and 1553. And we're, we're told that Etienne never actually published his essay while he was alive. It was printed it was passed on in manuscript, and it was published after he was dead, after he passed away. And uh, uh, so this, uh, so uh, for, this is from the introduction. I might repeat some of the things he mentions because he will quote Etienne's um, <coughs> um, essay. So he talks about Etienne being born from an aristocratic family, born in 1530. Um, and the amazing thing with this book is it is so timely. So timely when you see the masses around you submitting willingly to servitude, submitting willingly to slavery, giving up their constitutional rights willingly to the authorities. And you think, what is going on here? Now, of course, uh, this is especially true because... People are, 
ignorant. People have not studied history. They do not know what happened in the Soviet bloc, the communist revolutions, the totalitarian systems, and even in the so-called socialist, which were <laughs> pretty, pretty authoritarian revolutions throughout the world in the 1950s and 60s. And, uh, and the surveillance states which emerged from them. And they are willing to give up their freedoms and their liberty and their uh, dignity and their indiv individuality to the leaders, to the uh, authorities uh, in the name of uh, health, in the name of safety which is uh, voluntary servitude. Anyway, so, okay, so he was born in an aristocratic family. He, grew, he studied at the or University of Orleans. Died in 1563, pretty young guy, 32 years old. Um, so, as I said, it was just circulating in manuscript before it was published after his, his passing. Uh, so he says in the introduction here, the fundamental insight that was for Le Boutier the fundamental insight was that every tyrant must necessarily be grounded upon general popular acceptance. In short, the bulk of the people themselves, so us, the people, for whatever reason, acquiesce to their own subjugation. We acquiesce to our own slavery, subjugation. Oh, there are mandates. Now you can't do this, you can't do that, you can you have to obey. You are subjugated. First, okay, please uh, you know, take a break for 2 weeks and now you are a slave. <laughs> uh, if this were not the case, so if people not willingly subjugate themselves to the tyrant, uh, no tyranny or any actual government rule could endure. So if people said just no, no tyranny could endure. What can they do? Arrest a few people? There are millions of human beings. So he, sa he says in the introduction, so why do people in, in all times and places obey the commands of the government, which always constitutes a small minority of society? And the quotes uh, La Bouetie in his, uh, his explanation, which I'll, as I said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go over his essay, I don't want to be repeating repeating the same thing twice. Plus, I will be just giving kind of little points here and there and giving a few commentaries. So, um, And he says, well, there are some people who classify this treatise, the discourse, the politics of obedience and discourse of voluntary servitude as La Bouetie's uh, kind of an anarchist. But he says, no, he wasn't an anarchist. He wasn't talking about against government per se but against tyranny. That is, is, there's a difference. And then for Le Bertie, he talks about, in the introduction, says like there are, he divided the various tyrants. There are three types. What are they? One is by inheritance, so basically certain kings, rulers, a number of dukes, uh, uh, nobles. Uh, number two is by invasion armies, uh, generals, uh, conquerors. That's the second type of tyrant. The third type of tyrant is the ones elected by the people. And that is where we come in here. And he said that for the elected, he's quoting La Bouetie here, they surpass, surpass all, surpass other tyrants. They surpass other tyrants in cruelty. And then I'm going to actually quote La Bouetie himself. So they are the elected officials, tend to be even worse than kings and worse than conquerors. When they go into tyranny and subjugation of the populace. And we should think of that again, not just in the world, in the church. Now, again, uh, a pope or a bishop, he is supposed to be of the representative of Christ. Even the bishop is the vicar of Christ in his diocese. And obedience is owed to him. But when the, 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 the representative of Christ 
becomes a tyrant when he becomes he orders disobedience to God and do disobedience to the heritage of the church and subjugation of our will to his whims instead of to the faith, then he is a tyrant. And the same applies to him as applies to the uh, uh, secular authorities. And in the introduction, he says, look, the, again, he's, a, he's summarizing the, 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 the book. The deception occurs in cases where the people during wartime, wartime, emergencies oh we got we got we got a new magic v Uh oh people are going to be getting sniffles and headaches oh my god never happened before in human history okay so in time for wartime emergencies people select persons as dictators so we select a prime minister or a president, and give him dictatorial powers, basically. Okay, it's no longer by consent, based upon constitution, upon laws. No, it's by decree. We decree. You cannot travel until you show us your passport of the V. You cannot go to the mall unless you produce your verification, unless you cover your face. You cannot eat at a restaurant unless, unless, unless. And, and the people in brain-dead servitude, worse than animals, go, yes, okay. And again, this is based on, as I said, the ignorance of the vast majority of people. Because people watch their local news. They watch their local television. They do not look at other countries in the world. Look, for example, in the Middle East. Look at Egypt versus Israel. Israel has the high, one of the highest percentages of of, uh, you know, that into their population. And they still have one of the most <laughs> infected populations. While Egypt has only 3.3% who took the poison. And they're living quite well, actually. And uh, life is pretty good, pretty normal. But if you watch the news, you wouldn't know that because all you hear is propaganda. So, and that is used to give the tyrant more power. That is the whole point of it. And that, that's why these passports are not for your uh, health. No, it is for control. It is for control, tracking, and um, yeah, subjugation. Once again, once, once begun, however, the maintenance of tyranny is permitted and bolstered by insidious throws of habit. So people get used to it. Okay, I'll wear that. I'll do this. I'll fall. We get used to it. Which, we, which quickly accustom the people to enslavement. And then he goes to the booty again. Uh... Consent is, that's uh, still from the introduction, which basically summarizes the book, which is basically what I'm doing here. Consent is also actively encouraged and engineered by rulers. They engineer our consent, our obedience, our subjugation, our enslavement. Give them a two-month summer break and then clamp on them in the fall. You know? And this is another major reason for persistence, and this is another major reason for the persistence of civil obedience, because it is engineered, obedience is designed, and now they have psychological uh, operations. Actually, in the UK, it was said that they were using bio, uh, uh, psychological um, warfare tactics to induce the population to follow the, the dictates of the government. And so he says, that one method of is by providing. Again, I forgot the, in the book, Le Bouti says he's giving examples from history, so he doesn't want to interfere with the local uh, governors. So he says, you know, oh, this Roman emperor and this Greek uh, warlord and this Persian uh, king, and and he gives examples from history to to bring out the, his points, which is uh, that's what makes the book almost timeless. 
Um, again, people might say, well, you know, it's like we got to obey the government. It's, the Bible says you obey your government. Obedience is filial uh, obedience to the government and to the rulers because all, from Christian Catholic doctrine, all power comes from God. So power of parents, power of rulers, be it kings, be it presidents, God designated them uh, in that position. Even Pilate, Jesus said, you know, to Pilate, you know, you, don't, you wouldn't have that power unless it was given to you. But that does not mean subjugation to evil. A, a ruler is supposed to be the hand of God, is supposed to be the guardian of justice and equity and true liberty, not a, um, a hand of the devil. And that goes for the church and the state. <coughs> so, so he says, the, how do they, the rulers engineer consent? And he says, one method is that they provide the, provide the masses with circuses and entertaining diversions. Hey, did you watch Netflix? Do you got Netflix on? Are you watching all the shows? Oh, did you go to your Zoom class? Oh, look, isn't that entertaining? Look at that. We have concerts online. And uh, so, yeah, entertain the masses so they are willing to submit to their own subjugation without much resistance. Another method induced is purely ideological. Dup and this is, this is again from the intro. Duping the masses into believing that the tyrannical ruler is wise. He knows better. They've got the data they know. We gotta listen to them. Who are we? We don't know. We gotta obey the tyrant. Oh, sorry, our elected officials. Our, 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 our authorities who can give us mandates uh, like they are little new, new little dictators. Uh, so, the, uh, so, we have into, so they're duping the masses into believing that the ty tyrannical ruler is wise, just, and benevolent. Look, he is locking you up and destroying your work and businesses and destroying families and your psychological well-being. And, and it's all for your own good and benefit. Don't you see that? Don't you understand how good your elected officials are? Destroying your social life, destroying your mental mental uh, happiness and equilibrium, and your jobs and your businesses, isn't all right. But they're doing it for your own good, for the good of society, of course. Um, and he gives the example. I mean, that's from Etienne as well. The Roman emperors assumed the the ancient title of tribune of the people, because the concept of tribune of the people. So these are the emperors who are who overthrew the republic of the Roman Republic and became the dicta the, the emperors. So they, they gained the, because the concept of tribune had gained favor among the people as representing a guardian of their liberties. So the dictator takes the, the title which represents a guardian of liberties when he is the one who is subjugating the people. And this is so so, um, so perfect the way it is, especially these days in politics, especially in the U.S. and in Canada. Those who are evil will call others evil. They will call them, oh, you're a dictator. And they are the dictators. You are... Um, you know, imposing these uh, tyrannical laws, when he, but they are, they are the ones who do it. You are do, every evil they att they accuse others of. It is them who are who are the ones who do them. For like almost, if you have eyes, you will see. And I don't want to be more explicit than that. You understand what I mean. Um. Uh, and he says, it quotes Le Bouti again, in modern times, so he says, in modern times, um, 
The rulers present a more sophisticated version of such propaganda. And now he's quoting Labouti, says, They never undertake an unjust policy, unlawful policy, policy, unconstitutional policy, unchristian policy, unhuman, in, unhuman, inhuman policy, even of some importance, without prefacing it with some poetry, some pretty speech concerning public welfare and the common good. We want to keep you safe. It's for your own good. It's for your own good we're enslaving you. It's for your own good. And if you choose to disagree, you're, a, you're an evil one who has to be suppressed. And so he says, another device used by rulers to gain the consent of the subjects uh, is uh, you, uh, of their subjects purchased by material benefits, bread, as well as circuses, the distribution of largesse to the people le- dupes them into believing that they are be- that they benefit from tyrannical rule. Oh, <clears throat> we destroyed your business. Oh, don't worry about it. We're going to give you some money to pay the rent. We destroyed your your work. Don't worry. We'll give you some. You can't find a job because you were laid off because we destroyed the businesses. Don't worry. We, the government, the good people in the government, are going to give you some some subsidies, some money to help you through these difficult times. So they cause the destruction and then they they present themselves as the solvers, as the rescuers uh, of uh, the, the providing the solution to your problems, which they themselves created. Uh, tyrants often attempt to suppress the education of their realms and of those who have, and then he's quoting again, Le Boutier again, preserve their love of freedom. But these people who preserve their love of freedom still remain ineffective, he says. And that's from from 1552. Because however numerous they may be, they are not known to one another. Under the tyrant, they have lost freedom of action, of speech, and almost of thought. You are cancelled. You're banned off of Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Um, you can't speak in public. Uh, we got to check your emails. Yeah, that's, that's, that's happening now. You're, you, you present real authority. Oh, no, no. We got to keep the party line. Exactly like communist, socialist, communist systems in the 19, from the nine, from from communist Russia, the Soviet bloc, the Middle East socialist dictatorships, all the same story. All the same story. You have to echo the party line. Now the free West has become exactly like the Soviet East. Free West, what a joke. The dem- democratic West. Oh yeah, maybe like 40 years ago, <clears throat> not anymore. For La Beauty, as for Machiavelli, authority can only be guarded, grounded on acceptance by the subjects. Because if the subjects just say no, the tyrant cannot rule. And as I said, um, so... So, yeah, that's it from from the intro. La Boétie's discourse has a vital importance for the modern reader. (laughs) And that was written in 19... I don't remember when the introduction was this, 1975, or whenever that was written, the the introduction here. Um, Anyways, uh, but imagine what it is today. 2021 2021 build back better build back better 
you will own nothing and be happy. That's what the World Economic Forum tells us of Davos. And this slogan, Build Back Better, go look it up online. Go YouTube, you'll find every leader. Trudeau, Biden, Kamala Harris, uh, Merkel, the, the puppet uh, UK Prime Minister, Boris, uh, all of them. Build back better. We need to build back better. You have to build back better. From now on, we will build that back better. And, uh, well, they're not psychically connected because they are conspiring. They are all repeating the same slogan of the Davos, of the World Economic Forum under Charles uh, Klaus Schwab. And in that thing, they said, oh, by 2030, you will own nothing and love it. You won't, you won't eat enough meat. Yeah, you got to be a vegetarian now. And uh, all kinds of fun enslavement things. You will be a slave and love it. So it is voluntary servitude. And you're going to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my stakeholders. Because the stakeholders are the one which will be ruling, not your elected officials. It's the stakeholders which matter. The heads of corporations, the heads of yeah, multinationals. The stakeholders are the ones which run things. Your little puppet elected official is just a pawn a pawn on the chessboard of the stakeholders, the ones truly running the world. Um, and again, another thing, if you notice, everything's 2030. We, Volvo is going to get rid of all the leather and gasoline from their cars by 2030. We got to go, we got the 2030 agenda, and we got to do this in 2030, by 2030. Where does this come from? United Nations, UN Agenda 2030. And uh, Mary in, in Fatima said to the children, the secret has to be revealed. The third part of the secret had to be revealed to the world by 1960. Now, 1960 to 2030 is 70 years. 70 years. And of course, that secret was never truly revealed. There is a vision which was revealed by the Vatican 2000, I believe. But that's the vision part. Not the words, because Mary was speaking. And the words were never revealed. And now, it's going to be 70 years. And is it by accident? Mary says 1960, and of course the destruction of the liturgy, the destruction of morals, the destruction of institutions of the church, the corruption of the clergy on an unprecedented scale since 1960. Uh, and the worst pope, if he is a validly elected pope, Francis, in history. And everything is heading towards 2030. 70 years. And, and why am I saying 70 years? If you know the Bible, 70 is a very important number. 70 years. Um, For La Boetie speaks most sharply to the problems uh, which all opponents of despotism find particular di particularly difficult. The problem of strategy. What do we do? They are the rulers. Where am I? What do we do? In the first place, La Boetie insight, uh, insight, insight that any state, no matter how ruthless, and despotic rests in the long run on the consent of the majority of the public. It rests on the consent of the majority of the public. How did, how did, um, I think it was on Jaruzelski in Poland, how were, was the communists in Poland overthrown? Pope John Paul went to Poland. He, with faith, the Polish people were still very Catholic, and with a Catholic Pope, a Polish Pope, I remember John Paul II went to Poland, he was speaking, and he was standing there, and, and Jaruzelski, I think his name was General Jaruzelski, if I'm, if I'm mistaken, it was a general. And you could see the guy, this general, his legs were like shaking. He, he was standing on stage, his, his legs were shaking. And the people 
got rid of the communists by the power by saying, no, we do not consent. We do not consent. And that's it. Um, he says, the consent is engineered largely by propaganda beamed to the populace by the rulers and their intellectual apologists. And this is has never been truer than it is today, especially with the technology of today. By the It was by propaganda, by psychological operations, by psychologists and psychiatrists, by propaganda experts, um, by the experts. And they're all speaking in the name of the government. And what do the governments do? Is the enormous increase. La uh, and this says remains in the same as in La Boetie's days. The only difference, and that was written in 1975, I think, the difference is the enormous increase in the use of specialized intellectuals in the service of the rulers. And this to now is like, in, you know, so much more than when it was written. And he says, like, some people say, oh, you know, it's the government's making mistakes and these are the errors of the government and let's discuss the errors. And he says, look, uh, first of all, the government chooses experts to bamboozle the population and the government doesn't do, make errors. He says, for much of what the state does is not an error at all from its, from its own point of view, but a means of maximizing its power influence and income. La Boiti was the first theorist of the strategy of mass non-violent civil disobedience to state edicts and exactions and mandates. All right, so that was all from the introduction, which is basically a good summary of the actual book, The Politics of obedience, a discourse of voluntary servitude. Um, now we're going to go quickly through the actual essay, <laughs> which I haven't, up to now, haven't done. But there you go, whatever. Here's the thing: the politics of obedience, discourse of voluntary servitude. Let's be slaves and call ourselves free. We elected our own tyrants. Yay! 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 Ain't that special? Aren't we so free and liberal and liberated in the West? Oh, yeah. Um, so, La Buite says, for the, for the present, I should, I should, I should understand, for the present, I should to understand, I should to understand how it happens that so many men, so many villages, so many cities, so many nations sometimes suffer under a single tyrant who has no other power than the power they gave him, who is able, who is able to harm them only to the extent, only to the extent to which they ha have willingness to bear with him. Who could do them absolutely no injury unless they preferred to put up with him? Unless they preferred to put up with him. Oh, okay, we'll obey your mandates. We'll put up with you. And rather than contradict him. Surely a striking situation. And he go, he's like lamenting here. He, and, and remember, he's written in 1552. He's lamenting. He says, But, O oh good Lord, what strange phenomena is this? To see an endless multitude of people not merely obeying, but driven to servility. They suffer, they suffer plundering, wantonness, cruelty, not from an army, but from a single man. Especially now we elected a single man. It's our elected representatives 
who are taking dictatorial powers into their own hands now. They rule by edict. They rule by executive order. Um, and this man, this usually elected official, he's no Samson, he says, or Hercules, he's, he calls him. And this is especially relevant to where uh, uh, in the, the 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 land uh, the great white north <laughs> and even the 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 formerly uh um uh, what are we called now it's like oh uh the uh, true north uh, strong and free oh yeah very free or uh, or the, the u.s the uh, the land of the brave and the land of the free and home of the brave or land of, I forgot. Well, yeah, not too free and not too brave anymore. Land of servitude and land of the obedient and the cowardly. So this man, this tyrant, La Bouti says, it's not a Hercules or a Samson. But he's a single little man. A little man. Too frequently this same little man is the most cowardly and effeminate in the nation. He's the most cowardly and effeminate in the nation. He likes his little hair and his beard and then he removes his beard and has his little curly hair. Our effeminate. That's what Labouti says. I'm not saying it. He says the tyrant here tends to be not a Hercules or a Samson but a little man a coward and an effeminate man, if that is the right gender. <laughs> uh, he's a stranger to the pow powder of battle and hesitant on the sands of torment. Not only without energy, not only without energy to direct men, but by force, but with hardly enough virility to bed with a common woman. All right, La Bouti. Uh, so again, it continues. Like when, a, when not a hundred, not a thousand, but a hundred provinces, a thousand cities, a million men refuse to assail a single man from whom from whom the kindest from whom the kindest treatment is the infliction infliction of serfdom and slavery what shall i call that what shall I, he says look uh, like a million people are willing to accept serfdom meaning lack of liberty lack of freedom from the dictates of a single man what what can i call that what can i call that he says, this is a monstrous vice. A monstrous vice. What monstrous vice then is this which does not even deserve to be called cowardice? This doesn't even deserve to be called cowardice. A vice for which no term can be found vile enough, <clears throat> which nature herself disavows and our tongues refuse to name. <coughs> So this is an accusation against us all. This is worse than cowardice. This is the vilest of vileness. But nature itself refuses this. And we, free men, accept it. And before you tell me, oh, hey, there's nothing wrong, we're just following a few little minor things. Yeah, it's been two years of servitude, and if you continue, it'll be a lifetime of servitude. You, your children, and your grandchildren. It'll usher in the new world order, the Great Reset, where you will own nothing, nothing and say, I'm happy. Thank you, boss man. Um, and... Uh, and this goes as well to church leadership, especially the tyrant in Rome, the dictator Pope, Jorge, 
of Argentina. If you say, okay, he tells you, abandon the apostolic rites. Okay, you are no longer to celebrate the ancient liturgy. All right, you are no longer to adhere to the traditional Catholic doctrine as enunciated in the Council of Trent and in every ecumenical dogmatic council of the church and abandon it all and adhere to the ever-changing understanding of the spirit of the pastoral council of Vatican II. And you say, sure, why not? You said it, I'll obey, like a brainless animal, like, in a, like a traitor to Jesus Christ. Of course not. We say no. We say no, we don't do that. Um... And all you have to do is say no and do not comply. Do not follow the mandate. Do not follow the decree. Do not follow the order if it is unjust. Uh, oh, then he gives, a, he gives the example. Okay, you know, we've got soldiers serving a... To, in, in war. Some people are serving to defend their home, their liberty, their freedom, and another group of soldiers is fighting, okay, because they were ordered to fight by the king or by the ruler. One has no enthusiasm for the battle. The other one is fighting for, for their families, their future, their children. So they have energy in the fight. Uh, for their all, for their whole posterity. And he gives the example of Leonidas. Uh, in you know movie 300 you know the Spartans versus the Persians and he says these were not like a fight between the Greeks and the Persians no this was a victory of liberty over dominion of freedom over greed that's what it, it was all about uh, who who could really believe that one man alone may mistreat a hundred thousand and deprive them of their liberty. Obviously, there is no need to in a fighting to overcome this single tyrant, for he is automatically defeated if the country refuses consent to his own enslavement, to its own enslavement. So the the easy way is like you don't, you don't have to fight a tyrant. You don't have to fight, you know, the elected government or the officials or. The, if the whole country or vast majority of the country just says, no, we just won't consent. We're not going to consent to our own enslavement. And the tyrant will fall. It is therefore, that's what actually happened in uh, apparently in Romania. And the vast majority of people said, no, we're not taking your V. You can take that thing and shove it. So the government after a while just closed up all the V centers. And the big Romanians became free. The stolen. Go to hell. We don't want that stuff. We're not obeying. And he continues. He says, It is therefore the inhabitants themselves who permit or rather bring about their own subjugation. So we permit, not permit, but actually bring about our own subjugation. Since by ceasing to submit, they would put an end to their servitude. So all you have to do is not submit, not obey, and you will end your servitude. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. So he says, like, there's so many people. They give consent to its own to their own misery, or rather, apparently welcome it. So instead of holding on to their liberty and freedom, no, they actually welcome their own enslavement. So all he says, look, all it is that without any violence, without any violence, people you they simply if the, they just simply are do not obey their rulers, what happens to the rulers? The ruler, the tyrant, become 
naked and undone as nothing. And all it's required is that it, he be not obeyed. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. If one person doesn't obey and the rest of the people are watching him get dragged to jail or punished or whatever, okay, now that's these, the rest of the population is consenting to its own enslavement, to its own servitude. But if the, the majority of the people say no, or even a quarter of the population says no, gives courage to the rest, and the tyrant becomes undone. It is the stupid and cowardly who are neither able to endure hardship nor to vindicate their rights. Um, they stop at merely longing for them. Oh yeah, remember when we used to be able to do that? You know, remember when you used to be able to take the cruises and go on and all-inclusive vacations in Mexico without having to go through a billion tests and ask a trillion questions? Remember when you used to be able to go to people's homes and enjoy barbecues and friends and laughter? Remember these days? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, grandkids. Yeah, I remember these days. But then, you know, we had this terrible, terrible, scary flu. And then we, we, we had to... You know, closed our, our doors for two weeks, and the two weeks have become now, what, 50 years, children. So yeah, I remember the days when we used to go to the all-inclusive in Mexico, and we used to go to our, our, our friends' homes, and we can have big parties with tons of people in them, without people afraid of, 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 of catching a, a, a flu, and uh, and uh, and uh, having sniffles, you know, sniffles and a bit of a cough are, are so dangerous, children, that we, we were willing to give up our liberties and our freedoms and uh, submit to, to, to enslavement. Aren't you happy to be slaves, little slave children? Little serfs? Oh, you look, look, our good rulers, they're giving us food to eat, aren't they? Good children. Look, we're, we, we got Netflix and Amazon Prime and Apple TV. Isn't that fun, children? Yeah. Well, that's what, where we're heading anyways. If people don't wake up. And uh, for my part, I'm leaving my options open. If things deteriorate where I am, I might actually have to head, head back to the third world, to the Middle East, to the non, non, uh, the the non-free and the non-democratic countries, so I can actually live freely. <laughs> All right, actually, that's a big option in, on my table. Depends on how things turn out in the next while. Um, Liberty is the only joy upon which men do not seem to insist. Liberty, this is so true now. This is so, so true now. Liberty is the only joy upon which men do not seem to insist. Who cares? I mean, uh, just obey. You don't have to do this. For surely, if they really wanted it, they would receive it. Which means they don't really want it. They're willing slaves. They are willing slaves. And that's why when Christ said, I came to set you free from the slavery of sin, the slavery of the devil. And in the traditional uh, baptismal formulas, the children are bapt exorcised from the power of the devil, from set them free from the slavery of the devil, the slavery of sin. But apparently a lot of people are willing to go back to slavery. Not only slavery of the devil, but of his minions and of his representatives on earth. So he says, look, for all these indignities, such as the very beasts of the field would not endure, you can deliver yourselves if you try, not by taking action, you don't have to be violent or taking action, but merely by but merely by willingly to be free, by willing to be free. Resolve, resolve to serve no more. 
that's enough of that, buddy. I will serve no more. And you are at once freed. And you are at once freed. Again, this is from the Politics of Obedience, Discourse of Voluntary Servitude. That was part one. Now, part two. Um, part two. He says, let us understand by logic, if we can, how it happens that this obstinate willing, or this obstinate willingness to submit has become so deeply rooted in a nation that the very love of liberty seems no longer natural. This is so apropos today, so, so true today. Like, People trying, well, I, I don't want to do this. My It's my right. It's my liberty. I, I'm free not to do this. I'm free not to take that. I'm, fr I'm a free human being. But he says <clears throat> that the willingness to submit, oh, but the mandate, oh, but the government, oh, but the, uh, but the authority says, oh, it became so deeply rooted in our nation, in a nation, that the very love of liberty now seems to be, to seems no longer natural. What are these weirdos talking about liberty and freedom and and human rights and, and what are the who are these weirdos? Who are these weirdos? Um, and that is basically where we are now. Who are those weirdos wanting liberty and freedom? Etienne continues, he says, the very beasts, God help me, the very beasts, the animals, <laughs> God help me. If men are not, are not too deaf, cry out to them. So even the animals, the very beasts, if people aren't like deaf, can't even hear, the very beasts cry to them. Long live liberty. So the animals are saying, long live liberty. Many among them, many among the animals, die as soon as they're captured. As soon as they're captured, many animals die. Because they don't want to live anymore in captivity. Others, and you see the people who, you know, oh, we don't want zoos, we don't want aquariums, uh, free the animals. Same people. Now it's the whole nations are saying, oh, free the animals, but enslave us. Don't put the animals in cages, but put us in our homes. Lock us up in cages. The insanity is complete, ladies and gentlemen. The insanity is complete. Um, he says other animals, when captured, put up a, a, such a strong resistance by means of claws, horns, beak, beak, and paws, and they show clearly enough how they cling to what they are losing, which is their liberty and freedom. And when they're finally brought to heel and, and captured, they are, he says, they are languishing rather than living. They're not like living and enjoying their servitude. They're languishing. Um, and continue their existence more in a lamentation of their lost freedom than an enjoyment of their servitude. So the very animals, when captured, first sometimes die because they don't want to live in servitude and losing their freedom. Some of them afterwards, they're just languish and just, you know, I'll walk around my cage. I'll do this. They're languishing in their servitude than... <clears throat> because they have lost their freedom. What evil, and I ask the same question, what evil chance has so denatured man? And ladies and gentlemen, man in this case means humanity. You know, men and women, boys and girls, because there's only you know, 
men and women, male and female. Uh, what chance has so denatured man as, the, as he, the only creature, meaning humanity, men and women, the only creature really born to be free, lacks the memory of his original condition and the desire to return to it. Lost the desire to be free. Lost the desire to be human. Animals want to be free. They still remember. Apparently, people don't. And now here's the point where it was talked about in the introduction about the three types of tyrants, which are the ones which become tyrants through elections. Our democratic Western nations with our free elections. Oh yeah, they're so free and fair. Free and fair elections. All right. Uh, and then there's the force of arms, which, you know, being conquered and by inheritance. So be easy. Nobles and kings and queens and whatever. He who has received the state from the people. Plans. <coughs> plans. Um. He pl never to relinquish, re never to relinquish his position. That's why we get early elections because I want to can hold on to my control. Such a man usually determines determines to pass on to his children the authority that the people had conferred upon him, and we have, of course, um, in the U.S. we had Bush one, Bush two, or there are. And then, of course, in Canada, we had Trudeau 1, and now we have Trudeau 2. And uh, and of course, in third world countries, you find a president which is elected, then turns himself to a, a, a non... Let's not pretend to be I'm an elected person. I'll, I'll be a total dictator. And basically, when he dies, his son comes and continues the reign of the elected president. That happens all over the place. So, uh, but in the in the Western democracies, it is better disguised. Better disguised as, oh, the people chose me. The people chose me. Again, when people get used to being slaves, servitude, servants, they chose uh, their uh, tormentors. There's an Arabic saying, an Egyptian saying, I think, it goes, I'm not sure if it's correct. Uh, I think it says, Al ghir The cat doesn't love except the person who's, who's, who's choking it. So, uh, so yeah, okay, the person's choking me. Oh, I love you. I love you. I'll, I'll elect you. Um, once his heirs have taken this attitude, Strange it is how far they surpass other tyrants, those elected and their heirs, how they surpass all other tyrants in all sorts of vices, and especially in cruelty. Because they find no other means to impose their this new tyranny than by tightening control. This is written in 1552. 1552. And we're now 2021. This tightening of control. Oh, you gotta show me your pass. Oh, you get? Did you get your V? Oh, did you? Uh, did you write something on uh, on Facebook which we do not approve of? Oh, did you upload a video which is uh, misinformation? Oh, by tightening control and removing their subjects so far from the notion of liberty that even the memory of it is <clears throat> that even the memory of it is fresh is fresh it will soon be eradicated so the elected officials will 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 tighten their control um, and remove even from the notion of liberty even if it's still fresh in the minds of the people they will eradicate it and this is exactly what we see now that's what well, I want to be free. I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm a free human being. I have to decide. 
I have weighed uh, the choices and this is my decision. No, you can't. Why? Because I said so. I said so. And that is, and most people say, oh, you, you, you got to do it. It's, it's, it's the authorities. It's our tyrant leaders. They said it. They know better. We got to obey. Otherwise, life won't get back to normal. It hasn't gotten back to normal two years. And if you continue in that that uh, way, yeah, it's never going to get back to normal. Maybe until 2030, when we see after the 70 years have passed, <clears throat> what happens after 2030. Uh, uh, all men, before letting themselves become enslaved, must either be driven by force or led into it by deception. And we have been led into it by deception, by a false fear of disease, by a, by a, great, um, by a great disinformation campaign, by propaganda designed by psychologists to dupe the masses. In the face of every fact, in the face of real numbers in, f in the face of admissions. Facts don't matter. That's what is amazing. It's known, but facts don't matter. When you've been brainwashed enough, facts don't matter. You obey like a slave. You give your children who have zero chance of even getting the sniffles from the magic V, you give them experimental medication. For what? To protect them, to keep them safe from what? From something which has zero chance of affecting them? This is the mental derangement we are living through. And people are, the vast majority of people, are compliant, are willing to accept the delusion. I mean, you can do nothing. I yell, I scream, I post, but facts don't matter. The authority said it's so, then it must be so. They can't possibly be lying to us. No way, man, no way, no way. When they lose their liberty through deceit, when they lose their liberty through deceit, and we're well on our way to that right now, in the Western democracies, um, they are so often betrayed by others as mis... They are often... Uh, when they lose their liberty through deceit, they are not so often betrayed by others. They're not so often betrayed by others, but misled as mis as misled as misled by themselves and why is it by misled by themselves because they are not critical thinkers they are not willing to examine things they are willing to blindly obey and believe they believe the secular authorities the science the faces of science on television than god himself than the very word of god they have more trust in, in something invented in four months than in their God-given um, system of defense built into them. Well, okay. What can you do? What can you do? Shows you, first of all, loss of faith. You have no faith, you believe, you cling to straws, you believe in delusions. And then when with every event proving the delusion false, you cling stronger to the delusion because otherwise you, you, you have to admit you that you've been fooled. And most people are not willing to admit that they've been deceived. Um, it isn't, uh, he continues here. It is incredible how as soon as a people becomes subject, 
it promptly falls into the into such complete forgetfulness of its freedom. They forget they were even free that it can hardly be aroused to the point of regaining it. Like the people, it's like, come on, people. Remember when you used to be able to do this and this and that? Remember when you used to be relatively free? They're not, you can't even rouse them. You can't even ignite the fire in them to, 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 to want that freedom back. Obeying so easily and so willingly that one is led to say, on beholding such a situation, that this people has not so much lost its liberty as won its enslavement. Congratulations, people. You have not lost your liberty. You have won your enslavement. You have won your enslavement. We don't have a failed V, but we have a breakthrough, a breakthrough case. Whoa, it's a breakthrough, man. It's a breakthrough case. <laughs> we don't have a failed th failed V, which, you know, took four months to develop, you know, but we have a breakthrough case. Whoa, it's fantastic. You people didn't lose your freedom. You won your enslavement. Yeah, let's keep it going. Uh, and people get habituated to subjugation. So he says these people, like, like, he gives examples again from history all over the time. And then he says, like, like him, we learn, we learn to swallow and not to find bitter, the venom of servitude. We learn to swallow and not to find bitter, the venom, the poison of servitude. The venom. The venom comes from snakes. The venom of servitude. It is truly the nature of man to be free and to wish to be so. Yet his character is such that he instinctively follows the tendencies that his training gives him. You, you get people used to certain things and people will, will you know, follow that um, training. Um, again, as I said, people don't know what servitude is. They don't know what a surveillance state is. We are living in a surveillance state. Every statement, every text, every email, every post, everything is surveilled. Uh, where your location, GPS, lo you know, tracking, everything is surveilled. And now they want to give you a special passport just to go and have dinner at a restaurant. In case to keep people safe. When the people who actually took the, the thing, that thing, carry the same uh, load of the magic V uh, as those who have it, and they can transmit it. So the, 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 uh, the, the pass is meaningless. It doesn't have anything to do with health, because people, both can carry the V, both can transmit the V, and both can get sick from the V. So your passport is meaningless for health. It is meaningful for control. That's why it's there. We even have uh, bishops, and apparently Pope Francis too. But there are certain bishops who said, no, you can't go to Mass unless you show us you've been, you took your double dose of poison before you can attend Mass. So they insist upon this more than they insist that the person be in a state of grace to come to Holy Communion. You have to be repentant of your sin to approach the altar of the Lord, to eat the bread of heaven. No, Amoris Letizia says, hey, you're in sin, but you have a good... Your conscience says it's okay. No problem. Come to confession, receive absolution for something you do not regret doing, which is in itself objectively sinful. And then come to eat and drink judgment upon yourself, as St. Paul says, by approaching the table of the Lord and eating the bread of angels. That's okay. Because it doesn't matter what God says. It doesn't matter what the Apostle Paul says. It doesn't matter, matter what Scripture says. It doesn't matter what 2,000 years of Catholic teaching says. I, the dictator Pope, says, you know, who cares? Come on in. Come to the table and have a piece of bread. Oh, oh sorry, I mean the body of Christ. 
um, yeah. But, so in sin, you can approach, that's no problem. But now some bishops are saying, well, you got to have your, your, your double dose of the poison before you can approach. You know, we got to keep people safe, you know. So this is more important than a state of grace. This delusion, this, 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 this evil, this evil. Um, do we obey? I personally don't. I do not comply. Um, uh, it is truly the nature of man to be. Um, yeah, we already that. Now. So the custom becomes, th thus custom becomes the first reason for, reason for voluntary servitude. Custom, we got used to it. You got to put that on everywhere you go. We get used to it. Suffocate little children, they get used to it. Let them breathe carbon dioxide and the moisture of their breath back into their lungs and cause them, you know, you know, bacterial infections. That's fine. They get used to it. They get used to it. It's okay. You can't go eat at a restaurant except you show your, your magic uh, thing. You get used to it. That's why it's great to go to a third world country because not everybody's walking with a smartphone. Nobody can afford it. Very few can. Every, a lot of people have basic cell phones, but that's it. So that's why my options of returning to the land which we escaped for freedom. We left these places in the Middle East to be free, to, so we can breathe, so we can say what we want, so we can believe what we wish. To, 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 to. But now, apparently there is more freedom in the uh, non-democratic uh, Middle East than in the Western democracies. Um, thus, custom becomes the first reason for voluntary servitude. Voluntary servitude. Men are like handsome racehorses who first bite the bit and later like it. You know, the, the, the horse thing they put in here. First they bite it and they don't like it. And then, then they like it. First they hate that thing on their faces. And now they like it. They can't, they can't remove it off their face by themselves in a car in the middle of nowhere. They have to have it. They're walking in the, in the, in the forest by themselves. They got to put it on. First they hated it. Now they can't, can't live without it. And, and rearing, <clears throat> and uh, like the racehorses are rearing under the saddle. They jump, they don't want the saddle put on their backs. A while sooner, learn to enjoy it. Enjoy having a saddle put on their backs. Enjoy their servitude. Displaying their harness and prance proudly beneath their trappings. Look at me with my... My the horse is rocking around with his saddle and his trappings and his bit. It's like to see people. Oh look! Now we got custom designed faces. We got custom, just like race horses. They first reject them, then they are proud in their servitude. They are proud in their bondage. They are proud of it, displaying it to all. Look at me online. I'm in the middle of nowhere behind a tree in the lake and look at that I actually was a uh, in the summer and at a um, um, in the Okanagan here and where I am if you know where it is anyways it was a big nice restaurant um, the, the uh, where I could still eat because uh, the 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 mandates of the wannabe dictators were not in effect yet because I will not take their poison. Um, so there's this group of people sitting there. I was watching this, and they're eating. And then one of them took a uh, camera to, to, to take pictures. So the lady in front of them, I said, before he took the picture, she took her, her nice, beautiful mask, put it on, and took the picture. And when the picture was done, she removed it. Oh, you gotta, you gotta have it on. You gotta have it on, even in Zoom meetings by yourself in your own bedroom. You gotta put it on, otherwise, you know. Oh man. Uh, 
There are always a few. There are always a few. That's why Jesus said, you know, only a few. Like the gates of, like I said, the, 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 the road is wide. Um, and and that leads to destruction, but the, the roads which leads to life is narrow, and few are those who find it. So the, there's the few who reach salvation because they will not compromise. They will follow the truth. They will not go, oh, here, there, everywhere. No. So there's always a few. Better endowed than others. Thanks. Thank you, La Buiti. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> Better endowed than others. Um, uh, who feel the weight of the yoke. And actually, I'm tired of talking about it, so I don't usually um, engage in, in discussions much. I place point of fact. You want to believe it, believe it. You don't want to believe it, I don't care. Go ahead, do, do whatever you want to do. Go enslave yourself. Go poison yourself. Uh, who feel the weight of the yoke and cannot restrain themselves from <coughs> attempting to shake it off. <coughs> there, are <coughs> there are the men who never become tamed under subjugation. There are the men who are never tamed under the subjugation. Um, so these people love the love of freedom. They love freedom, but the problem is they become, as, as we quoted before in the introduction, ineffective. And that's written in 1552. Because however numerous they are, there may be, they are not known to one another. Under the, tyrant's, under the tyrant, they have lost freedom of action, of speech, and almost of thought. They're censored right now, censored everywhere, um, banned, you can't promote things. Even in Australia, if you put, uh, hey, let's go meet up here, you're arrested. Um, but fortunately, there are alternatives to the mega sites these days. So their control is not complete. Um, he says the essential reason why men take orders willingly is that they are born serfs. So if somebody's born already like in that state of servitude, like if things don't change right now and people continue on the same path, their children and their children's children are going to be born serfs. They are born serfs. So the new serfdom is being created now. They're willing because they got used to it. This is how things are. And um, I think in the book he says something about like the Persians and the Greeks. And the Persian, like, this is how things are. Everybody's obeying, obeying, obeying because they're all slaves. Um, and are, so there are people who obey willingly because they're born serfs are, and reared as such. They are grown, reared, you know, as, as serfs. So learn to obey and follow. And, 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 and submit. <clears throat> From this cause, there follows another result, namely that people easily become cowardly and submissive under tyrants. So, because they're used to it, but when you were born, like when I was in the Middle East, when I was growing up, I'd start saying, I've got a big, uh, kind of a bombastic uh, confrontational um, argumentative personality so sometimes I was I had big discussions with my dad when I was younger so when we were still living in, in the Middle East I was like start talking about things uh, about religion and Islam and Christianity and whatever and my dad's like Shh, don't say that don't say that d -d 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 keep it quiet don't say it you might think it but don't say it because of fear, fear that the authorities, the government, the police, somebody's going to know, somebody's going to rat you out. And now we are in the same situation in the free West, which we came to. He even told me, like, he had a professor at university. He went to the University of Cairo. And this professor came one day, 
And at that time, there was the Nasser, was the, the socialist uh, president. He was a member, member of the coup, which overthrew the king. Not a revolution, just a revolution. It was a coup, a military coup over of the king. And when they promised actually to put his son in power, or the king, and the king was much better than the socialists uh, who took over, the little tyrants, and he became a tyrant. So this professor was saying, uh, somebody said, uh, did you hear, uh, one of the students told him, that my dad tells me that this, one of the students said uh, to the professor, hey, professor, have you heard who died? I guess somebody died. And then he said, no, uh, who died? And he told him somebody. He said, oh man, I, was, I had somebody else in mind. So apparently one of the students went and told the, the authorities, the secret police, that hey, this professor apparently wished the president dead. And that professor was never seen from or heard from again. He disappeared. And that was at the University of Cairo in Egypt. When the 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 socialist president president one of the coup members uh, uh, was ruling Egypt, Nasser, Abdel Nasser. Um, so he gives examples from history. He says like the people of Sardis rebelled. So what does a tyrant do sometimes? He doesn't have to punish them with weapons. So what did the tyrant do? He's he established brothels and taverns and public games. Hey, entertained the people. Not all tyrants have manifested so clearly their intention to effeminize their victims. Effeminize their victims. So make men more like women. Uh, more submissive, more tolerant. Men are supposed to be, again, there are exceptions, but in nature, girls and women are more... Uh, loving, more kind, more submissive, more, and men tend to be more aggressive, more confrontational, more mm, demanding. Um, so, so this tyrant, it's like, oh, let's make the men kind of like the women, calm them down, tone them down. So, uh, it is indeed the nature of the populace to be suspicious. So this is so true even now. Even now. He says, it is indeed the nature of the populace, especially in, in cities, because that's where most people are. And even now, it is the cities where, like, <clears throat> where the people are most submissive to the dictates of the tyrant. Um, it is indeed the nature of the populace, whose density is always greater in the cities, to... To be suspicious towards one who has their welfare at heart. They're suspicious of those who tell them, be careful, don't do this. It's, it's, it's dangerous. Don't let go of your freedom. You have the right to do this. You know, don't take that. It's not been tested. Why are you, you can fight it yourself. You don't have to do this. Be careful. So they are suspicious of those who have their welfare at heart. And gullible, gullible, towards those who fool them. They are gullible to those who fool them. Hey, we invent, we can't stop the regular flu, but hey, magically, we, can, we have invented something in four months that can eradicate something novel. It's magic. And people, wow, give it to me. And then, of course, now, it's not working anymore. So we got to have a third, a fourth, a fifth, every six months, maybe every two months, according to Johnson & Johnson, and maybe some pills on top of it, because it's so effective, you know, and safe, don't forget it. Ignore all these other things, I mean, we say it's safe, so it must be safe. So, they are gullible towards those who fool them. They don't imagine that there is any... Do not imagine... So, he says, so, this is, so first of all, they don't accept those who who care for them, who actually care about their welfare and pointing things to them. No, no, don't tell me this. But they're gullible to those who fool them. He says, don't, don't think, don't even imagine that there is any bird more easily caught by decoy nor a fish sooner fixed by, on a hook, by, uh, on the hook by a wormy bait than are all these poor fools like the humans who follow are so gullible, those poor fools 
neatly tricked into servitude, neatly tricked into servitude by the slightest feather passed, so to speak, before their mouths. So he, says, he gives examples, as said, plays, spectacles, pictures, and such opiates, things which make people drugged up. Hey, let's legalize this and legalize that. And did you watch all the TV shows? And, and did you go on, waste your day on YouTube and Netflix and Facebook and Twitter? Tweeting? Tweeting like a Tweety Bird? Uh, so such tactics, which are like opiates, that drug the people, bait towards slavery, the price of their liberty, the instrument of tyranny. So, I don't want my liberty... Hey, can you get me some 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 uh, financial support and let me watch Netflix? Whoa, okay. Who cares about my liberty? That's okay. I'm safe, right? All right, that's that's all I care about. I'm safe. Um, so this is he says is learn subservience as little children learn to read by. Uh, looking at bright picture books. He gives examples of people say, look, they won't even give up a soup bowl to recover their liberty. Hey, I'm eating. I've got enough food. I've got my, my support from the government. Who cares about my liberty? You know? So that's why tyrants distribute largesse. Look how much we supported businesses in this in these difficult times, you know, which we ourselves caused. Uh, but now we're helping you businesses and, and helping the people recover from this these unprecedented times which we devised and, and caused. Uh, and, and, and the people say, long live the king. Let's re-elect our tyrant. Yay! That's what people do. The fools, the fools did not realize that they were merely recovering a portion of their own property from taxes, from from all the rest of it. So the fools are happy with the, the pittance they're getting from the government, which the government took from them in the first place. And, and when the government is going into unprecedented debts, them and their children will have to pay. Nothing is free. Nothing is free, but they are so easily fooled. All right. And these people says, look, they give resistance like a stone or a tree stump. <laughs> like no resistance at all. Oh, we're almost done now. And he gives examples. Says, look, like Julius Caesar, like he overthrew the Republic, declared himself emperor. But, you know, when he died, people were so sad that he died. Well, he was killed. Um, and he, what did he do? He, he swept away their laws and their liberty. So he swept away the Roman people's laws and liberty. So now when you say, well, the Constitution guarantees us our right of religion, of assembly, of speech, and of a, or in the Canada Bill of Rights, we got our freedom of this and freedom of that. Who cares? We are going to get rid of our laws and I'll, you're, I'm going to take away your laws and your liberty, and you're going to say thank you and re-elect me. And, and that's what he did, uh, Julius Caesar. And then, and people were, were, were sad that he died poi because, because of his poisonous amiability, because he was kind of likable. Uh, the, the, uh, of this, of his, that... So his poisonous immunity that sweetened servitude of the Roman people. So it made their servitude seem sweet. Aren't we happy to be slaves? Serfs. So it says today, he says today, and that's in 1552, and is so much more so in 2021. Today, there are some who do not behave very differently they never undertake, they never undertake an unjust policy, an unjust mandate, an unjust law. 
even one of such importance without preface, prefacing it with some pretty speech concerning public welfare and the common good. We're going to keep people safe. It's for your own good we're going to make you slaves. It's for your own good we're going to take away your freedoms. It's for your own good <coughs> we're going to let, not let you eat at restaurants unless you show uh, that you've been poisoned twice. It's for your own good that you can't travel anymore. It's for your own good. You can't go to church unless you've been poisoned. It's for your own good. You can't say the truth that men are men and women are women. Because, you know, men can be pregnant these days. It is people who get pregnant. It's not women. Women don't get pregnant. People get pregnant. And it's like the Lancet Journal apparently says, like, uh, bodies with vaginas. You know, it's not women. It's bodies with vaginas because, you know, it might offend men with vaginas, I guess. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> well, whatever. So this is the mental <laughs> state the world is in. Uh, people think, oh, we're getting more advanced, we're becoming smarter. Actually, actually, people are getting stupider and dumber as time goes on. Very few are actually getting smarter. The vast majority are getting stupider and stupider and stupider by the passing of every year. It is pitiful to review the list and if you look at this guy, I mean, he's writing 1552 and he was 18 years old. He wrote this when he was 18. He died at 32. His knowledge of the classics and, and of the histories is, un, is, is amazing. What 18-year-old now knows any of these things? All the references he makes. You wouldn't. I didn't know half of them. I had to go look at the, the uh, little notes at the bottom telling me who's who. That's the state of education. That's the state state of education. And nobody has the, the time to think about things. That's why my videos don't get a lot of views. I have three-hour videos, four-hour videos. Nobody has the attention span to sit there and watch a three-hour video. They want like five-minute clip. Hey, who, who, ah, and that's it. It's too much thinking. I don't want too much thinking. Uh, it is pitiful to review the list of devices that early despots, early despots, which hasn't changed much, used to establish their tyranny. Always finding, you know, and all the tricks they use, always finding the populace conveniently gullible. Conveniently gullible. And it hasn't changed since then, ever. Indeed. They always fooled their victims so easily that while mocking them, they enslaved them the more. While mocking them, they enslaved them the more. Like in the U.S., and in Canada, and many countries. You see the, the, the governors of various states or provinces, and they're mandating, Oh, you cannot stay at home. Don't go, don't go out to the restaurant. Quarantine. And then you see leaked video of the same person who mandated this out with his friends and buddies and family at restaurants, eating, drinking, enjoying life, traveling, while telling his people not to do, he does, while mocking them. Indeed, they always fooled their victims so easily that while mocking them in their face, they enslaved them the more. And people are Still willing to go with it. In this wise, a foolish people itself invents lies and then believes them. People invent lies and believes them. So even the rulers sometimes who invent the lie start believing their own lie. They believe their own lie. Or those who have been fooled by a lie. No. They have been fooled, but the it's here talk about the people, foolish people itself. The fool, it is, uh, it is in this wise. The foolish people itself invents lies and then believes them. So we invent a lie, and then we believe it. Tyrants themselves have wondered that men could endure the persecution of a single man. 
some of these, he says, some of these tyrants have used religion for their own protection. And where possible, they have borrowed a stray, a, a stray bit of divinity to bolster up their civil, their evil ways. So these tyrants will use religion to to bolster their, their for their own protection and to bolster their authority. And they will even borrow a stray of divinity to bolster their evil ways. I am the one who is protecting you. I am the one who is guiding you, like a god. And they will talk about, uh, you know, it is if 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 you love uh, these people, you will do it. You will take the 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 double poison because I it's from God. Uh, there is a video of the new governor of New York, the installed governor, after Cuomo was removed, resigned because of his crimes. Um, so uh, the installed governor. There is a video. Of, just go look at uh, governor of New York. Um, preaches at church, in church, which happened a few days ago, so I guess in September 2021. I'm not going to put the, the video of it, but you can look it up. Just look it up. Governor of New York. So she's in church. Some, some church. Some church. You know, Billy Bob's church. So she's talking to them. Like, and she is talking in religious terms. Because this is not... This is... This, this this so-called disease it is a religion. It is a religion. More important than any other religion. It's the new global religion. And she talks to these people and she basically tells them, this is from God. You got to have double poison because this poison was given to us by God himself. And he tells, she tells the people, this one, you have to do it because you're smart. And you know people who aren't. You know who they are. You got to go find them. And she says, I want you, she's telling the congregation, I want you to be my apostles. So she's equating herself to Jesus Christ, who's sending his apostles to preach the true faith to the world, baptizing them, telling them to obey, to follow his, his what, everything he commanded. So she's telling them, I want you, she's telling his, this congregation, I want you to be my apostles, to go to these people, and tell them to, to take the double poison. So we have this person, and no, she's not the only one. A lot of people are equating this with, with a divine command. But she is. She took it to the, such an extent that she is referring to herself basically as Jesus Christ and his, this congregation as her apostles who are going to go spread the, the news, the good news of the poison. We have reached such an extent of insanity. All right, last few pages. Um, in short, when this point is reached through big favors, oh, now here, now he's talking about how is this possible that this one man can reach so much authority? Well, he says, look, it's not just the man. It's like the man, he has... His collaborators, like five or six, help him. And he lords it over them. And then they have their, under them, a few hundred. And the few hundred have under them a few thousand. And the few thousand have under, under them. So all of these different levels of people are gaining um, advantage. Money, power, influence. That's how this one man, through these various steps, can maintain his rule. Um So these, that's why this tyranny continues, because all these different grades of people want this tyranny to continue because they are benefiting from it, benefiting through greater authority, maybe prestige. Look, my word is law. I mandate this, and you got to obey because I mandate it. It's give them this false godhood status. So, thus the despot subdues his subjects, some of them by means of others. I'm skipping here. What? 
Oh, this is a good line too. And this is again, remember what Klaus Schwab of the uh, World Economic Forum, the Davos group, which all the world leaders go to, Agenda 2030, UN Agenda 2030, where they had an essay, you will own nothing and you'll love it. He says, uh, I'm not making it up, look it up. Deva, uh, World Economic Forum, Twitter, you will own nothing and you will love it. Uh, the Great Reset, look it up and you'll find it. They put out the video themselves. So he says, what condition is more wretched than to live thus with nothing to call to call one's own? You will own nothing. Receiving from someone else's sustenance, one's power to act, one's body, one's very life. And that's where we're heading. What condition more wretched than this? Nothing. But if you've been given to servitude and serfdom, you might not even notice that. And this is a really good quote. Again, he talks about uh, these people who serve the tyrant. And the tyrant, if they, for some reason, just changes his mind, doesn't like them anymore, they're eliminated. They're removed, they're replaced, they're whatever, and they lose all their power. <coughs> and this goes as well for our beloved tyrant Pope, uh, Francis. Um, so he gives, again, examples from history. He says, um, and this gives sufficient evidence of how little faith one can place in the friendship of an evil ruler. <clears throat> so don't, don't say, well, I'm, I'm friends with him. You know? Indeed, what friendship may be expected from one whose heart is bitter enough to hate even his own people because of a, <coughs> a ruler subjugating his own population especially an elected um, ruler is subjugating his own population this is hatred of his own people he tells them I'm doing it for your own good I'm going to enslave you for your own good I'm going to remove your freedom for your own good I'm going to put burns, burdens upon you for your own good for your own safety and indeed we have that in Francis, the Bishop of Rome, who hates his own people, who hates Catholics, true Catholics who want simply to be Catholic. And I don't want to offend, <clears throat> scandalize Catholics. You must remain Catholic and you must remain in the one and only Church of Jesus Christ, which is the Catholic Church. We have an evil man in Rome, but that evil man will come one day and he will be no more and he will be before be before the throne of Christ, the king, the ruler, who is going to render his judgment upon him. <clears throat> so, but he is an evil man. He hates everything Catholic, everything traditional, all the doctrines of the faith, even Jesus' command to go and preach and baptize. He says this is proselytism. He invents his own evangelization, which is not nothing like an evangelization. He hates the ancient faith. He hates the ancient liturgy. What can you say? What can you call such a person? He hates his own people. He hates his own church, to which who he's supposed to be the head. Assume again that Benedict actually validly resigned, which I have extreme doubts about this fact. Um, I'm going to just read this part again. How little faith one can, uh, how little faith can one can place in the friendship of an evil ruler? Indeed, what friendship may be expected from one whose heart is bitter enough to hate even his own people, who who do not, who do not else but obey him, who do nothing else than obey him. So we obey, okay, don't do this, fine, we'll do this. And he will still betray them. He will still hate them. 
he does not know how to love, that he ultimately impoverishes his own spirit and destroys his own empire. And that we see in the world and in the church. Countries going bankrupt. Canada, the U.S. with going into trillions and trillions of debt, printing, printing, actually digitally, money out of thin air with no backing, just printing money out of thin air, creating debt out of thin air, destroying the country, destroying the U.S., destroying Canada, destroying the world. And in the church, destroying the church. <clears throat> um, anyways. Who was ever more easily managed, more naive? Oh, oh this is, uh, he's talking about here, Claudius, the emperor. But that could go for uh, certain uh, presidents, certain prime ministers, and definitely a certain Jorge Bergoglio, known as Francis. Here's the quote: "Who was ever more easily managed, more naive, or so to, sp or to speak quite frankly, a greater simpleton than Claudius the emperor? Stupidity in a tyrant, stupidity in a tyrant." always renders him incapable of benevolent action. Stupidity in a tyrant always renders him incapable of benevolent action. <clears throat> so no matter how, you know, traditional orders like Fraternity of St. Peter or the Carmelites now in, in Pennsylvania who are under visitation for being Carmelites, for following the Carmelite rule for living a Carmelite life, so that now they're being investigated by Rome. Well, you know, pervert priests and pervert nuns are running around, and heretical priests, they're fine, they're good, they're part of the, the spirit of Vatican II conciliar church. But nuns who are living holy lives, priests adhering to the ancient liturgy, with the approval of the popes, no, 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 that's bad. So you can't even to be nice to them, they're so stupid that they're incapable of benevolent, good action, beautiful, benevolent actions, incapable of it for somebody stupid. And of course, you can see it in the face of Francis, how smart he is. And in places where the wicked gather, oh, this is again, again, I, could, I, I read this line, I thought, oh, the Sankt Gallen Mafia, which helped elect Jorge Bergoglio to the papacy. And places where the wicked gather, there is conspiracy only, not companionship. These have no affection for one another. Fear alone holds them together. They are not friends. They are merely accomplices. What a good line. So this is, again, goes very well with, again, the coming line with secular rulers nowadays who are just issuing edicts, executive orders, mandates out of thin air, and with Francis, who is, again, out of thin air, making up laws, ignoring history, ignoring tradition, making up stuff out of his, you know, out of his backside, you know. Uh, so this is a tyrants. They've learned that from these around them. If they're all powerful. Oh, I issued a mandate and people actually did it? Whoa, let's do it more. It's so much fun. And, they're, and ultimately, un unlimited by any law or obligation. So the tyrants, become they know from people around them that they're all powerful and unlimited by any law or obligation. Which, of course, Pope Benedict said, the Pope is not an absolute monarch whose will is law. No. He is subject to law, he is subject to tradition, he is subject to, 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 to scripture, he is subject to, to the faith. He is not an absolute monarch whose will is law. But apparently, Francis and 
those around him told him, hey, you're above the law. You do whatever you want. Same thing with the local local uh, uh, authorities. Oh, I can issue mandates for two-year-olds to, to go around like this in school. I'm sure. It's for their own good. And of course, people are going to say, oh, okay. It's for own, their own good. Anyways. <clears throat> so, that there are, these tyrants are unlimited by any law or obligation. Thus, it becomes his word to consider... Uh, oh, thus it becomes his want to consider his own will as reason enough. So the tyrant says, well, my will is reason enough. I want it done, and that's the way it is. That's it. That's, you want a reason? I want it, so that's my reason. Obey, then. Hey, I'm the Pope. I said it, so obey. I'm the Prime Minister. I said it, so obey. I'm the uh, the uh, authority for your body. Obey. I'm the president. Obey. I'm the governor. Obey. I said it. It's my own will, so it's law. So now we have a universal dictatorship, a universal tyranny in the church and in the world. And here's the, the problem. The people never blame the tyrant for the evils they suffer, but they do place responsibility on those who influence him. And again, same thing in the church and in the world. In the church, they were saying, oh, Paul VI, oh, he was being duped by those around him into destroying the liturgy. And he wasn't, to a certain extent, being duped, but he consented to the duping <laughs> of Bonini and others. And he instigated a lot of it. And, oh, you know, oh, poor little Francis in Rome, he's being manipulated by the by the by the Parolin and all these other people in the in the Curia. Oh poor little guy. No, he's not being manipulated. He is the manipulator. He is part of the gang. Um and uh anyway, so that's the problem. People complain about oh they don't want to attack the person they are around him. But go the buck stop swear at the at the top. Who is responsible? Um, now, I will end it with the final uh, paragraph of the book. I will read this uh, completely. Um, all right, let's, let's finish up with the book, The Politics of Obedience, The Discourse of Voluntary Servitude by Etienne de la Boétie. So, the final paragraph reads... Let us therefore learn, while there is yet time, let us learn to do good. Let us raise our eyes to heavens, for this, to heaven, for the sake of our honor, for the very love of virtue, or, so to, or to speak wisely, for the love and praise of God Almighty, who is the infallible witness of our deeds and the just judge of our faults. As for me, I truly believe I am right, since there is nothing so contrary to, to a governor, to a generous and loving God as tyranny. There is nothing so contrary to a generous and loving God as tyranny. Justice is not tyranny, just in case you were wondering. I believe he has God. I believe he has reserved in a spa separate spot in hell some very special punishment for tyrants and their accomplices. And so ends it, Etienne de la Boétie, in his Politics of Obedience, the Discourse of Voluntary servitude grab the book purchase it and uh, spread the word um, so this is my commentary talk on the book read a good portion of of its uh, content but that's where we are this is what we are living through voluntary servitude 
people giving up their rights, their freedoms, their liberty, their free freedom of thought, conscience, in the name of obedience to the will of tyrants for our own good, for keeping us safe. Keeping us safe. Well, look at third world countries. They're pretty safe. They haven't poisoned themselves and they're pretty damn safe. Safer than the the Western countries which have poisoned their populations. Um, and no disease, no threat, no difficulty surpasses, uh, overrides the dig our dignity to be free. Free to pursue the good, the beautiful, and the, the just. We have to be free. This is humanity. It's not just the words, oh yeah, we've got the true north, strong and free, but yeah, you were slaves. Uh, we got to obey the mandates and the diktats of our authorities. Or in the, you know, in the U.S., we're, uh, we're a free nation. We got the Constitution, our freedom of speech, and, but no, we got we to censor you everywhere. No, so we have to follow what Etienne says, which is non-compliance. Do not comply with uh, evil. Because if you comply, you are inviting your own enslavement, your own servitude. Not only your own, but those that of your children and your children's children. So it is simply time to say, no, not doing it. I'm not following and I'm not complying. That's it. That's all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.